Uh, welcome everybody to the November edition of the Forest Park Southeast Neighborhood Association. Um, we have a little bit of a packed agenda today. Um, as always, some ground rules. Uh, if you have questions, please enter them into the chat. If you are attending in person, please raise your hand to speak so we can provide you the mic so the people on Zoom can hear you. Please, no interruptions, behave with common courtesy. Um, and today's agenda. Uh, I don't think we'll have ward updates today. Uh, your older person is traveling right now, and I don't know if uh, his legislative assistant will be attending tonight. Um, we'll have a crime and safety report um, from Officer Walker. We'll have some neighborhood updates from Ron. Um, we'll go with the treasurer's report. We have the annual board elections. Uh, we have ballots here in person. And if you're online, we'll go out into breakout rooms and I will share a Google forum for you to vote online. Um, I'll go through some events and some news. Uh, briefly cover uh, development <clears throat> review committee packet. And then uh, we have Trey here from the city who will cover some city resources. Uh, but without further ado, um, I will skip the board updates. Uh, but if you have any questions or concerns, you can send them to Michael Browning. Uh, here's his contact information. Um, as always, we encourage you to report any concerns to the Citizen Service Bureau. Things like uh, loose or strayed or injured animals, damaged or overgrown city trees, cracked or broken sidewalks, broken or damaged street signs. A lot of things uh, you can request service from the city to repair or fix um, using the contact information here. You can tweet them, you can call them, you can go online. Uh, there's lots of ways to get a hold of them and to let them know that there is a service issue in your area. I believe these packets are passed around as well, so you can take a look at those. Um, if there aren't any questions around that, um, I will pass it over to Officer Walker. Hello, everyone. I'm Officer Walker, Neighborhood Liaison Officer. I'm going to keep it short. Not a whole lot going on. No one has reached out and contacted me about any problems or issues in your neighborhood. I have given you guys your worksheet of your spread out spreadsheet, shall I say, of all the calls or some of the calls that we've been dealing with in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood. Um, I think I started back from like October 30th up until yesterday. So you can kind of see what's going on in your neighborhood. If you have any questions about any of these incidents that's on this spreadsheet, you can reach out and give me a call. I can give you my phone number if you want to write it down or you can email me your questions also. It should be listed up on the board. I also gave you guys the packet of all our safety flyers that we've been giving out every month and every week. So something for you to read over. If you have any questions about those, you can also call me or email me. I also put the CSB flyer in that packet. And it's just like I said, just some things for you to read over, be aware, share with your neighbors. If you would like me to email those flyers to you, please reach out to me and I can send those to you also. And then again, if you have any type of issues going on on your block, you see something suspicious, please give me a call. Let me know um, if you can flip back to that CSB flyer. If you look at that car, if you got a car on your block that looks something like that, flat tires, busted windows and things like that, give me a call. Don't send it to CSB. They're going to send it back to me. But if it's just a car, you know, with uh, expired license plates or something like that, then that'll go through CSB. It's nothing we can really do with cars like that but ticket them. But if you got a car that's got flat tires and missing windows and things like that, that's more for me. Give me a call, and I will work out with City Tow to see if we can get that vehicle towed off your block. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of those questions. But again, if you guys need anything from me, please reach out, give me a call. Um, email works good. So if I'm not in the um, office, I do respond back to those. I keep my computer up in the car so I can't respond back to you. If I'm not in, then I can send that information over to one of the other neighborhood liaison officers who can fill in for me if I'm out of the office. Um, but if anyone has any questions for me, I will step aside and pass the mic. Director patrol means that officers were in your neighborhood or on your block patrolling. That's our way to kind of say, hey, that we were over there because we get a lot of 
you know, questions and comments about, hey, I never see an officer on my block. So this way, when the officer is coming down or they call out on that particular block, and we call it a direct patrol to show that, hey, we were over there. If anyone's saying, hey, we haven't seen the police in a while, instead of us just driving down the street, you know, we'll put it on the air so it is noted that it's in a computer system, but hey, we came down your street. Anything else? All right. Anybody else have any other questions for me? All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Walker. Um, yeah, it's going back to the CSB uh, slide. One of my favorite activities is walking around the neighborhood with my dog and taking photos of all the spray paint and graffiti and tweeting the CSB. So I uh, highly encourage you to do that as well. It does take a couple of weeks. They often get a lot of graffiti requests and they're um, often uh, pretty backed up on a lot of the other requests, but uh, they do eventually come around and, and remove uh, graffiti and all the other uh, uh, issues that we have going on. So if you're out and about and you have your phone and if you have Twitter, three deadly com conversa uh, uh, combinations right there. Sorry. And I, sh I don't know if you all know, but I shared a digital uh, drive, which has all of these sort of flyers such as this online that's always updated. It has the Brightside flyer in the information in there for Brightside, if you want to organize something like that with them. So. Thank you. Uh, I will share uh, the what Trey had mentioned was there's a link of resources that he had shared with us. Um, I put that on the website and I can share that link with you all uh, when we get to that slide. No, it's okay, that's really cool. Uh, neighborhood updates, I think Ron is here and Ron, I'll turn it over to you if you wanna share anything that you have. Yes. All right, everybody. Um, yeah, Dan, thanks for walking the neighborhood and turning in things. I it was. Kind of funny. One day, I sent him. I texted him a picture of, of a car, a derelict car, and I said, "Can you find where this is?" And he was upset that he hadn't seen it yet. But it was on a block he doesn't walk. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you turning in anything you see. Uh, Citizen Service Bureau uh, is the same system I use. I have direct access, so. Uh, but it does generate a service request to that department that is responsible for the request. Um, and, and so whether I turn it in or you turn it in, you should get the same result. Um, so I'm going to jump to what is probably on a lot of your minds right now, especially if you're in a residential parking district. Uh, I checked in with the treasurer today because a lot of you still have questions about not having received anything in the mail or having had problems with registering for a, a, uh, a tag. Um, so I will read you verbatim what I got from the treasurer's office today. Number one, we believe we have a majority of residents registered for permit parking successfully. We will go live with enforcing the permits January 1st for those residents who still have yet to enroll in park uh, permit parking to give them time, basically. We had three in-person events at Park Central over the last two weeks to support residents having trouble applying online for permits. We helped about 30 residents complete those applications in person. Number two, since the permit program is digital, residents will not receive anything in the mail. They will receive email confirmation. Uh, they can also log into their portal and see that their permit is active. So what he's saying is that they have technology where their cars are going to drive by and scan license plates. And if you have a, an active permit, your license plate will not flag the system uh, as needing uh, a ticket. So that's, that's basically that. Number three, uh, we've been evaluating special situations that residents have brought to our attention. The first thing is 
Uh, for example, they'll be looking at uh, residents who have medical conditions and have healthcare visitors on a consistent basis. That's one example of where you might have a different car showing up every day for healthcare uh, reasons that they're they're trying to figure out exceptions for that. And we have other situations like, um, you know, parents who may, or grandparents who may be babysitting on a regular basis, but it'd be too awkward to have a, um, pay the $2 every couple days for a new permit or something like that. But if you have any questions for the treasurer, please uh, let Dan know and he can relay those to me. Then other, other updates are the uh, leaf pickup. We don't have, we aren't vacuuming. Well, if there are a lot of leaves, they, they'll come by and vacuum, but only on street cleaning day. So the please on street cleaning day or the day before, rake out your leaves to the curb, maybe a foot or two away from the curb so the sweeper doesn't push them back up on your lawn, but they will sweep up those leaves um, and take care of that. That is only happening in November and December. After that, please don't blow your leaves into the street. It's just gonna create a an ugly mess. Um, what works well for me is just mulching the leaves with the lawnmower and then running over it again with a bag. And you can pretty much pick up the whole yard in like one or two passes. It's really easy and then just put it in the dumpster. So that being said, yard waste collection is suspended from December through February and doesn't start again until March. So try to get all your yard waste uh, in the dumpsters before December. However, they will pick up the dumpsters on bulk week. So you will still get one yard waste pickup a month. There won't be any roll cart yard waste uh, during the winter but you will have one yard waste per month on bulk pickup week. And then they'll resume weekly in March again. Uh, let's see. The You may be mentioning this, Dan, and the events coming up, but just because I always get calls the day after, the hot chocolate run is going to be December 3rd in... Uh, that's a Sunday, next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the next Sunday, December 3rd, from 6 a.m. to noon. So if you are in that triangle where you're going to be blocked in, uh, they will have parade or run run volunteers that will let you in and out of your block. But just be aware that that's going to happen. It's starting in Forest Park running through Cortex, through uh, then down Manchester and back up uh, through the medical campus back to Forest Park. So if you want to check out the route, you, it's online. That's all I have uh, for now. Does anyone have any questions? I don't see any questions. So um... Please let Dan know if you do, and he can contact me and then get you an answer. Or you can always contact me directly with my information's up on the screen there. Sweet. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Um, all right. Um, bum, bum, bum. I believe up next is uh, Treasurer's Report. Cami, do you want to do the honors? I can do the, do you want to? No, I got it. Okay. Uh, for the month of October, uh, we spent $15.99 on Zoom and an ending cash balance of $18.01.20. Uh, you can get the treasury's report through this link on our website um, to keep up the tabs on how money is being spent or not. Um, if you would like to donate or become a dues paying member, uh, we use Cash App, Check, Cash. Um, if you would like to become a dues paying member or donate via Cash App, 
Our cash app is FPSENA. Um, for cash or check, you can uh, talk to Kimmy or myself or shoot an email to forestparksoutheast at gmail.com and we can coordinate from there. Um, for today's purposes, uh, we do have an election and if you would like to vote in the election, um, you must be a dues paying member. Dues are pay what you can. Um, and with that said, we will move into uh, board elections. All right, hybrid is pretty tricky, but we'll do our best. Um, these are the nominees for 2024. Um, for president, uh, myself, Dan Doling. For vice president, Mark Mingapora. Secretary is Kimmy. Uh, treasurer is Ev. And then member at large is Sarah Kogan. Um, how we will do uh, the vote in person is uh, we will pass out ballots to uh, dues paying members and we'll give you a pen or a pencil to cast your ballot. If you are online, we will break out into uh, a breakout room uh, in which those who are dues paying members will be sent into the breakout room. I will send you a Google Forum link for you to vote uh, and those votes will be totaled uh, with the in-person ballot and uh, shared at the end of the meeting. Um, Tim Howell here has volunteered himself to be our, uh, we'll count the ballots and we'll report on uh, the results. Uh, so without further ado, um, I believe we've passed out in person. Uh, does everyone have a pen or pencil? Um, I will take a look at who is here in person or online and begin to assign people to a breakout room. So one second, please. All right. Um, I believe we have Ryan Day. Ryan, you're going to be sent. We have Ryan. Ken, Phil, Rachel, Ben, I believe Ben is, I know you're on here, I know you're on here, Ben T, um, Tom, uh, reach out to Ben. Go to that room. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, so for everyone in the breakout room, I just sent a Google form link that you can fill out. Uh, it's the same exact ballot that we have here in person. Uh, when you hit submit, those will be cast into a spreadsheet and I'll pass that spreadsheet on to Tom for him to add to the total. And where do we look on our screen, uh, Dan? To when you're form? done. All right. I guess I can try to see if three responses so far. I think I'm looking for five responses. <laughs> Thanks. Do we respond by going to chat? Oh, sorry. What's that, Bill? Do we respond by going to the chat room? Uh, I sent a link in the meeting chat. Did you get it? I don't see it, but I'm not. It could be here right in front of me, and I'm just missing it. You might have to scroll back. It's the, well, he just posted it again. 
Yeah, I posted it again. Um, yeah. You still having trouble? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what, what I'm doing wrong. Did I'm you not... see my text in the uh, in the chat where I said he was muted and then yes? Or you don't see those either? Let's see. Um, I don't. I, I can see Ken Johnson to everyone. You're muted in the breakout room. Yes. Uh, Dan Dooling. Okay. Let me press that and see. Oh, there it is. I, I just shared his link. If you could see mine, then you would see that. You get it? But now it's disappeared. Let me go back and see. It would be in your browser now. You clicked it. Any success, Phil? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, success, at, at, success at revealing my uh, limited skills uh, oh. with the computer. Uh. Can I tell you who I would vote for? Uh, I can. How about this? I will exit the break room and then I will enter a different break room for you and I, and then you can <laughs> and I can tabulate that. Does that sound good? Great. All sure. Right. Thank you. I believe everyone. I have everyone else's vote, so I'm going to uh, close the break room and then enter a new one with you, Phil. All right. Good. Here. I appreciate it, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Dan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. A box comes up on my screen and it says sign in. And behind that, I can see the uh, election um, ballot. But I hit the sign in and it moves me to uh, another box that says Google, sign in, use your Google account. And then it looks like it's got the uh, email address for my son, Nathaniel, who lives in Brooklyn, New York. It all seems a little nuts. Yeah. Um,
Can you hear me? I can't hear you, Dan. Yeah, it's a, there's a nice picture of you on my screen. Can you hear me but, now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to give me your ballot? I would vote yes for the five candidates. Okay. I will tally that up. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very, very much for your patience. <laughs> Thanks. Great. All right. See you in the other room. <laughs> yep. Okay. Good. There we go. Can you hear me? All right. Yep. Great. All right. Um, we'll share results uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, I'm going to jump into some events and some news. Um, so first off, uh, our next upcoming event is some winter tree pruning uh, on the first Sunday of each mat or each month at 10 a.m. Uh, we get together and prune some trees. Um, so. If you would like to join us in our next pruning of the trees and shrubs, we'll be at Shoto Park on December 3rd. All tools will be provided. This is not a picture of us from last time, but I guarantee you we took pictures last time. Um, we cleaned up, uh, what was it, Taylor and Shoto and, and Gibson and Shoto. So we took down some uh, honeysuckle and uh, in its place left a very beautiful, what was it, an elm tree? <laughs> just all over the place some eastern red buds so those are <laughs> thriving now <laughs> thriving now um next week modot is taking uh input on how to redesign manchester and shoto so it's safer for all modes of transportation um they from shoto to manchester they're looking at how they can improve the safety so um, I encourage you to join uh, that meeting at uh, Buddha Recreation uh, Center Gymnasium at 29 Hickory um, and share how we can design Manchester and Shoto so that we're pro prioritizing safety over car efficiency, how we're building permanent structure that can be used to control reckless driving and sharing you know, what steps we can take to improve mobility and safety for everybody. I think uh, as we think of Manchester, we want to make it a walkable, enjoyable, pleasant place to uh, wine and dine and walk your dog um, and not have street racing. So if you can attend and let them know your thoughts on ways we can improve that safety, um, sooner or later, we can have a more walkable neighborhood. Um, the Board of Aldermen is also asking residents for feedback on which residents submitted ideas they believe is best to address the city's challenges using the Rams uh, settlement money. Um, they've identified seven priority challenges uh, to address using those funds. Uh, some of those ideas have been improving community mobility, improving city finances, upgrading the water infrastructure, uh, catalyzing downtown reinvestment, providing city services by attracting and retaining workers in the last two, increasing access to affordable childcare and increasing public safety. Um, you can go and vote and provide feedback at this link, which is stlouis.citizenlab.co. Um, there's a lot of money to be uh, shared out. So if you can help provide that feedback on where it should be used, the city will listen. Uh, the city of St. Louis is also redoing its strategic land use plan. Uh, what is a strategic land use plan? Well, glad you asked. Um, it is the city's plan for the physical development of the city, and it authorizes what kinds of developments can happen and where. Um, throughout the city, so block by block. This plan has not been updated since 2005, and a lot has changed in the city since then. Um, so they have a survey. 
Uh, they also have a uh, virtual workshop next week, but the easiest way to provide your feedback um, would be through a survey on how can the city best use its land to reflect uh, St. Louis's current conditions and aspirations. So if you hit up the link, uh, bit.ly slash SLUP 2023, it'll send you to the Google form, which we've had a lot of exp experience with today um, <laughs> to, <laughs> to get your feedback. Uh, and then over the last several months, uh, the association has worked with a few folks on de-volcano mulching. So um, we've worked with Green Street on educating them about the harms of volcano mulching and they've allowed us to de-volcano mulch a lot of their trees. Um, de-volcano mulching is the act of removing piled up mulch on the trunks of trees that cause uh, decay and uh, eventually death. So we've uh, demulched 150 trees in the neighborhood and saved those. We had about 45 volunteer hours over the course of April to October across seven events. And we had 23 different smiling faces. I mean, look at these folks. They're so happy they're saving trees. Look at this, look at this. Look at those smiling faces. Oh my gosh. Um, there aren't a lot of locations left to de-volcano mulch in the neighborhood, but um, there's plenty of opportunity around uh, the city of St. Louis. But if you do see uh, mulch piled far too high on a tree's trunk, um, do take your hands and kind of scoop it away. And uh, ta-da, you saved a tree. Uh Man, a lot to get through. We're only halfway there. Uh, if you're interested in doing uh, uh, projects like that, like tree planting, flower planting, default volcano mulching, or just helping uh, beautify the neighborhood, uh, join the Neighborhood Beautification Committee. Um, we're always looking for volunteers, and it's always a good time. Uh, if you would like to join, um, you can hit up me or Cami or send an email to forestparksoutheast at gmail.com. Uh, and the same with the event committee. We're planning a lot of events for next year. Our biggest one is the great gathering that happens in September. It's always a handful and we would love uh, anyone's input on how to make it bigger and better and your hands to help make it bigger and better. Um, if you'd like to join, same tagline, hit up me or Cami um, or anyone else on the association or send an email to forestparksoutheast at gmail.com. We already talked about parking, great. Um, yeah, I thought I'd also share, share some things that are happening in the neighborhood. Pie Guy has opened a bar at the former Gazellic Tap House that is open now. Um, I do miss Gazellic, so I'm very happy that uh, the bar is back open. Um, where Layla's is right now, uh, Good Company will occupy that space. Um, good Company will be an approachable, full-service neighborhood cocktail bar with a menu of gastropub fare. Um, burgers and uh, something between a smash burger and a steak burger um, and other good eats. So that'll be opening in spring of 2024. Yes. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to try it for yourself and find out. <laughs> What's that? Steakhouse burger. <laughs> uh, and then at 1200 Tower Grove, uh, Saturn Salon will be open in the uh, newly renovated building here. It's a very beautiful building. It's going to have a few apartment units, um, but uh, the Saturn Salon will take uh, the corner here at uh, 1200 Tower Grove. Uh, all right, any questions before we dive into our next chapter and a novel that I'll read? All right. Um, Development Review Committee. So the Development Re Review Committee re uh, meets every fourth Tuesday of the month. Uh, they'll have their next meeting at Park Central at 6.30 p.m. at uh, 4512 Manchester. Um, one project will be under review, and that is um, uh, 28 market rate, uh, two-story townhomes, uh, 
and 14 single story garden units at the corner of Vista and Tower Grove. Um, Vista and Tower Grove is here at Vista and Tower Grove. <laughs> Uh, they are townhomes. I don't have answers. To, I there might be answers forthcoming in this deck, and any feedback can be uh, shared. I'll have ways you can share feedback. Um, I'm going to briefly cover this. Uh, so, a property owner is Splitsburg Glass and Holdings. Uh, they have. Uh, they're a real estate company that has developed more than 70 apartments in the city of St. Louis, and the architectural firm has been in the same ownership for many years. Uh, the site of the project is at uh, Vista and Tower Grove. It's been vacant uh, after several attempts by past developers to build something there. Uh, the description of the project is townhomes at Tower Grove, um, positions row houses along the primary street, uh, every unit, including a patio and balcony, along with a rooftop deck to encourage active street frontage. The exterior of the building is 100% brick, and the project aims to serve a growing need for housing in the neighborhood and support the restaurants and businesses nearby. Um, costs. Uh, anticipated construction is in April in 2024 with completion in April 2025. They are not seeking any financial incentives. Uh, again, 14 row houses totaling 28 units. Uh, there'll be 28 parking spaces accessed through the alley uh, for surface parking. And again, no tax incentives. Um, the, so exterior of the building will be uh, Earth tones, all brick design, uh, transitioning uh, gap between uh, St. Louis brick and contemporary designs. Uh, the part of the building that faces the parking lot behind the building will have an exterior insulation finish system. And then unit interiors will be high-end durable finishes. Um, they are seeking some variances for setbacks. Um, those can be found here. This is what the site currently looks like. If you've walked by it recently, here's an aerial view of it. Um, here is uh, some ele exterior elevations of it. Again, Vista and Tower Grove. I agree. Uh, so six uh, modules along Tower Grove, eight along Vista, parking lot in the back. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, 28 parking spaces and a gate and fence for lot entrance. Um, here are the floor plans. Um, first floor, second floor, third floor, one bedroom, two bedrooms, and then a very similar floor plan for uh, the ones along Tower Grove. Um, Park Central is recommending support with uh, the following conditions. Um, any additional changes in the specified use or changes be brought before the development committee. Uh, they're recommending to make the crosswalks ADA compliant on the corners of the project and provide exterior cameras for the building that are integrated into the Boris Park Southeast camera network. Um, if Oh man, I didn't copy and paste that. Um, if you would like to attend this meeting and show how share how you support it or learn more about the project, um, you can attend the meeting here at uh, Park Central, or you can provide. Boom! Dang it! I had this in here. Um, you can send an email to uh, Forest Park Southeast development I'm sorry guys at gmail.com hopefully you can see that let's make it bigger um, for them to have your feedback on support um, before the meeting ideally you get that in at Monday before five so the committee has time to review um, that's all I have to share.
I got this packet two hours ago. <laughs> so if you have feedback, attend the meeting or send an email to fpscdevelopmentreview at gmail.com. Um, the meeting will also be available to join via Zoom. I will send out an email to everyone to have this packet and to have the meeting information uh, probably tomorrow. Yes, thank you for sharing this info at a time so we can get the neighborhood aware. Thank you all. All right, uh, last but not least, we have Trey here with uh, a lot of uh, community resources. Thank you. Actually, I don't have that many resources, I already shared it. Uh, specifically, my name is Trey Prothrow. I am the Community Communications and Engagement Assistant to Mayor Jones. Um, so here for the city, but really here to share some updates from the mayor. Um, just about things going on. Uh, most importantly, I think a lot of people uh, concerns when it comes to public safety has been 911. We started the year with 40 vacancies for 911 dispatchers and 13 vacancies for EMS dispatchers. And we're happy to announce as of two weeks ago, we were down to seven or eight uh, vacancies. So we are very close to being fully uh, staffed for all um, um, 911 dispatch um, areas, that's EMS, fires already full capacity, and police officer. There's a national standard that calls are 90% of 911 calls are answered within 10 seconds. And when we started the year, we were failing miserably at that standard. And um, as far as a couple of weeks ago, we're just a few percentages lower than that 90%. So that's what happens when you have people there to answer the phone. So that's just a quick update around 911. Uh, and as you know, we'll be breaking ground uh, soon on a new state of the art 911 facility that will be called, it will be a PSAP. It will be the first time that all three dispatch areas will be housed in one um, building. And that's just to improve efficiency and effectiveness um, when it comes to that. Um, and we have to give credit to personnel. I think personnel has hired maybe five or 600 people this year um, in the last six, seven months. So they, with the new director, making a big effort. Uh, we hosted the first job fair uh, at City Hall uh, a month and a half ago, and we had 500 people show up there where they were able to interview on the spot. Um, also, Slate. Um, has served over 1,700 youth this summer as far as with job placement and year-round uh, placement as well. And they just um, had a graduation for the CDL program. So if you know anyone who's looking for a job or anyone who's interested in getting their CDL, the city of St. Louis is providing that training for free. Um, and I, there's a $3,000 sign-on bonus for those jobs also. So if they like to get on the, you know, and they don't actually have to leave town like, you know, a lot of CDLs where they're on the highways. It's just work here in the city. Um, so that's that. By show of hands, how many of you heard about the GBI pilot program that launched a couple weeks ago? GBI guaranteed basic income? I've heard of it, yeah. So that pilot program launched. And so essentially the lottery was November the 1st. And we had like 5,000 applicants, a little bit over 5,000 applicants that had to be at 170% of the federal poverty level or lower. Um, and for a pilot program of 18 months, they'll receive $500 a month. These families are also, they, the requirement is they have to have children enrolled in a public charter or a St. Louis public school here in the city. Um, they have been offered benefit counseling, and um, they've also been offered to take part in WashU's uh, research program, which is going to look at these numbers and see how families were able to spend it and to see the income and the impact uh, to see if this is something that is larger than a pilot program. It was modeled after about seven other cities who've seen some great success, which is why there's a very specific month, uh, number of 18 months. Because people are like, well, couldn't you serve more people with six or 12 months? Well, yeah, I mean, we could serve three times the amount of people, but it won't have the effectiveness that programs have had because of that 12 to 18 month period, which is very necessary. Um, December, well, not December. We're not there yet. Uh, October 13th, the mayor toured the new, the old Killark Electric Center on um, Warehouse on Dr. Martin Luther King because the St. Louis Development Corporation just acquired that building. It's 150,000 square feet and additional 15 acres. 
that will be transformed into a world-class work hub force, which will be a part of this triangle that's sort of connected with the new manufacturing um, building, the NGA West downtown, and then on the north side here on um, Dr. Martin Luther King. They're gonna move all of Slate into that building, all of the Office of Violence Prevention into that building and provide a number of classes and training for high paying, um, important in demand jobs uh, here in the city. Um, so that's really exciting. And did anybody hear about the recent senior property tax freeze that the mayor, was, so that passed out of committee maybe two weeks ago. And so essentially the, t the property tax freeze, which will go into effect next year, if you are 62 and over, older uh, and your home is $500,000, which is expensive, or less, you can get your property taxes frozen right there at that level for the remainder of your life, essentially. Um, you will have to go down to City Hall every year to apply for the, the tax freeze, but you're eligible to do it. Um, so, yeah. And you can sure ask, you can ask your aldermen about that in the coming months more about that as they begin to debate the specifics of the topic and um, further such. NGA um, is bringing about 2,000 jobs to North Jefferson and other businesses in, geo, in the geospatial industry. So here in the next couple of years, we're going to see a, a large number of high paying jobs here in the city between NGA and a couple other things that will be announced here uh, soon that I can't really share, but they're exciting. Uh, public safety. We are still trending down with a 20% crime is down 20% violent crimes. There has been an uptick in uh, theft crime, auto theft crimes. Um, it had stopped for a minute after the city sued Kia and Hyundai. Um, but I don't know if it's just the weather is getting colder or what it is, but there has been a recent uptick in that. So just to be cautious of those kind of things. But in addition to homicides being down 20 percent when it comes to crimes involving youth that's down 37 38 percent so we're really excited to see that because when you look at the news a lot of times a lot of those things were being committed by young people um even when the first car theft thing was happening with the kia boys i think those those kids were age, averaging like ages 13 to 15. um when it comes to LRA property, the city is trying to be a better steward of these properties. The mayor allocated $15 million to demo LRA properties that cannot be saved um, and $5 million for LRA rehabs and then also $14 million for neighborhood beautification. Um, and we can't just build the houses. We have to invest in the community. Um, so this includes uh, providing these funds for shops and businesses, uh, places for kids, um, so that was a $20 million allocation for neighborhood transformation grants. Did you all apply for any of those through the CDA? Yeah, cool. Awesome. Moving on. Oh, and I saw the slide up there about the Ram settlement funds. Um, the mayor always says, you know, we were awarded $498 million from ARPA and that ARPA funding has a deadline. It has to be spent by 2026 or it will go back to the federal government. And so this year it has to be allocated. And so we don't wanna to rush to, as you say, break the political piggy bank, whereas the Rams money is in a high interest bearing account right now. We have, last time I checked, we had already earned maybe 13, $14 million in interest just this year. And so we have to spend the, the ARPA money, which does have a deadline. Rams money does not have a deadline. If we don't spend it this year, next year, or four or five years from now, it'll still be there, um, you know, accruing interest and getting higher and larger. Um, but we have to spend the ARPA money. And ARPA money is hard to spend because it's federal money. And so where the RAM settlement money has literally no restrictions you know if we wanted to spend it on fixing all the roads we could but you know but on that actually that was a point that i skipped by this year, <laughs> street safety um back in 
April or March, the mayor signed a $40 million bill for street calming. And I did not bring the, the layout about the timeline, but it is on that folder from when a project is passed. I think it's like, it's like 800 something days. Like it's, in, it's, it's like an insane amount of time. Um, but these things are already in the pipeline. So you can go online and look at it. Um, and one thing that I don't hear about nowadays at meetings is trash pickup. I mean, there was a point where everyone's complaining about trash, but I know every time I go out there so far, have you all been having issues with trash recently or still? No, it's, it's always gone, which is really nice now. Um, so it's just the small things. Um, and something I even overlooked, if you all have some students, they are, Slate is also providing uh, driver's education um, through the Boys and Girls Club um, for high school students because it goes back to safer streets. And I know when my dad always talks about when he was in high school, like driver's education was actually a class they took, um, which we don't see that at a lot of schools for a number of reasons. But that's that. And as we're moving into the cold winter months, uh, to discussed on house. The city will be uh, rolling out the uh, winter accommodations for the unhoused here in a couple of weeks or less than that. Uh, but specifically, we just attended a ribbon cutting for a tiny home village on Jefferson um, Grand. This was sponsored by uh, Jason Kander's organization, where they built their building. And they built fifty tiny homes, which is a little bit different from the tiny home village right there on Jefferson, near Central Patrol, where those are really small little things. These homes in this village were actually built, and we look at them; they actually look like little small houses. When you go inside, they're basically like studio apartments. They're really nice, and it's just another component in trying to provide temporary transitional housing um, for unhoused neighbors, which looks different because unhoused, there's not just a one size fits all, you know? We have our chronically uh, unhoused, which those are the ones who we traditionally would look at and identify as homeless. Uh, but then there are a lot of people who, you know, are in transitional housing and looking for a permanent housing. So we're trying to do all of that, but that's it. And as far as all those great resources, you can always go to the city's website. I have some business cards too. If you ever have any questions or issues, CSB, not getting through, uh, CDA, SLDC, you can email me or give me a call. Dan has my information and uh, I'll get on it. I promise. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trey. Uh, as Trey mentioned, uh, city resources, I put a link on our website under resources, city resources, you click there, go down, you click community resources, and uh, a lot of the handouts that he had here today are on the Google Drive, so uh, easily accessible through our website. Uh, thanks so much. Um, all right, uh, ballot count. Uh, Tim tallied up the votes. And we have 13 ballots. Uh, congratulations to Sarah, Ev, Cami, Mark, and Dan on being elected to the 2024 board. Uh, congratulations. Well done, yes. Uh, let me go back to the screen I was sharing. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, next up, uh, always happy to hear if you have uh, speaker requests. Uh, we have a running list here, but if you'd like to add any to this list, uh, would love to hear who you'd love to hear from, any concerns you have, any interest you have. Um, always looking to add people to our agenda. Um, next up, as mentioned, uh, the Development uh, Review Committee meeting is on Tuesday, November 28th at 6.30. Uh, at 4512 Manchester. Uh, the MoDOT Shoto public meeting is at Buddha Recreation Center Gymnasium uh, the following day on Wednesday, November 29th, starting at 5. Our winter tree pruning is on Sunday, December 3rd at 10 a.m. You can meet us at Shoto Park. Uh, and our next meeting will be January. We do not have a December meeting. Um, we'll meet back here at the Missouri Foundation for Health as well as Zoom. Um, but without 
further ado, uh, that's all I got. Uh, yes, Dan. Yeah, for 2024. Okay. We need to have it as a standard package of all yeah. ways that yeah. if there's always a space on the agenda or before or after, so take on it. Sure. Because that's the way our representatives will hear from the city. The way it's set up now. Yeah, we can add public uh a public discussion uh into the agenda. Yeah, happy to do that. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Hope to see you uh, around. That's all I got. Happy Thanksgiving.